Hello Steelers and welcome to this video in which I'm going to show you how I painted this platoon of American US paratroopers for the Second World War. These are actually battlefront figures but I'm painting them for chain of command which is why they're individually mounted. They're 15 mil and they're plastic figures from the hit the beach box set uh, that you can get some Germans in as well. Uh, it's pretty much the full platoon but I needed to add a few more figures here and there just to build it up from the box itself. But without further ado let's get on with how I painted them. The first thing to do was to prime them and with this I was just using a rattle can of basic primer. I got this in Wilco's here in the UK but you can get it anywhere like Halfords or any cheap shop. This is just white and as they were still on the sprues I just painted all of them. You can see here there's still some Germans as well which I will do in a future video but I was just basically literally spraying everything uh, to get underneath all the figures as much as possible. You can always go back over them once they're based again later on and uh, give them another spray or once you cut them off the sprues. Make sure you're doing this either with a mask on or in a ventilated area or ideally outside. Uh, this was a ventilated room so I wasn't too bothered but just make sure that you're not breathing in the, uh, the fumes from the spray can uh, or as little as possible. And then it was time to start basing them. Uh, I'm using 15mm diameter MDF uh, bases here. These are circular. You can get them everywhere. Uh, most people sell them. I just got these ones off eBay. And using super glue, I just fixed the figure on. Uh, I sped up the process by using CA Accelerator, which is a fluid which you spray onto the figure and basically just speeds up the drying time of the super glue itself it can be a bit messy so probably do quite a lot of these at once and on a surface you don't mind getting dirty like i didn't here then using some polyfiller or spangle as it's called in the us just go around the base ever so slightly just to fill in those gaps between the actual uh, mdf base and the base of the figure as well and for this i'm using a very small flat headed screwdriver as you can see just to keep it smooth if you really need to if you do get it a bit messy uh, you can always just wipe it off this is quite a boring process and if you're doing a lot of figures at once as i was uh, you might want to sit down and listen to a podcast or even listen to one of my battle reports there's plenty more on the channel check them out and before I started everything else I just painted the base and the MDF itself in white as well and just touched up some of the areas that I missed with the primer and then I started working on the uniform of the chap using quite a big brush as you can see here I'm using US dark green by Vallejo paints this is to replicate the 1943 pattern uh, camo smocks that they were wearing and trousers the 1942 one is a bit more sandy, 43 one is a bit more green. So I'm just basically slapping this on really as all over the figure. Don't worry about hitting other details because we're going to be covering those up anyway later. Whilst I was working on the block colours, I also started work on the base as well. So this is just flat earth by Vallejo and just painting this on again with a rather large brush. I'm doing it now because it doesn't matter so much if it goes onto his boots because again we're going to paint over those. But obviously at this point just try to be as neat as you can around uh, some of the small details but don't worry too much as I said because we are going to be painting layers on top of these things anyway. The next thing to paint very quickly is their boots and this is chocolate brown uh, to replicate the leather. As I say these are going to be very quickly painted figures. These are for tabletop purposes not for display cabinets or not for golden demons. So this is basically how you do it very quickly just uh, slapping these paints on in a block colour and we'll let the Agrax earth shade do all the work later on. Then the biggest thing to paint is the equipment that they're wearing. So this is all like the canvas bags, like their backpacks and their pouches and that kind of thing. Any of the bayonets and pouches that they're wearing and even the little knife pouch. Now this is Green Okra by Vallejo. And the reason I paint it in this is just to give a little bit of contrast between that green. You could just paint them in a, in a kind of greenish colour, but they'll look very dull on the tabletop. Remember, these are 15mm figures, so you want bits of them to stand out from a corn, from a, a long way away. Not from a corner, but from a long way away. Uh, so this is why I use a slightly contrasted colour here. Uh, it looks as good really as faded canvas should do anyway, uh, dirty canvas that's been used in the field so I wouldn't worry too much. Just try to be as neat and take your time over these things because you don't really want to go back and have to cut in again but you can do so don't worry too much if you're a bit messy on a first pass. 
Flesh is next, and for this I'm using Sunny Skin Tone for these guys. Uh, yeah, there are various different flesh tones, this is just a Vallejo one. Uh, I sometimes use Tan Yellow as well, I quite like that, it looks uh, quite flesh, but Sunny Skin Tone also works here. So this is just a, a pass on the face and on the hands. Just again, try to be as neat as you can, use a, small, a brush small enough to get in under that helmet and on those hands. Then we're on brown violet for the helmet. Uh, this particular chap has got some little camouflage strips that are hanging off his helmet. I'm going to paint those in the highlighting process, so don't worry about them for now. Just get that brown violet on the helmet first of all. Uh, same with the ones that, are, that haven't got the camouflage netting on top of their helmets or any of the other scrim and that kind of thing. And here I'm using beige brown for his M1 Garand that he's got in. So this is just for the wooden stocks. If there's any other wood or anything that you want to paint, uh, then do it at this point in the beige brown. It looks very nice once it's been agraxed. It's a really nice colour for paint, for wood, for, for at least used wood anyway. And the rifle strap is then painted in stone grey because it's quite a leatherish little colour. So again, just a, a quick line across and then that's done. And then to finally finish off his rifle, just painting the end of the barrel in gun metal and also the bolt area as well. And any other little metal pieces you can see sticking up here and there. And then we're on to my favourite stage, the Agrax. Just get a biggish brush, dip it right in there and slop it all over the figure. I know this is quite horrific, colouring in all that detail that you've done, uh, but believe me, this will work in our next stage. So the next thing to do is to start the highlights, and this is very easy. All I do is I go back, once the Agrax is dry, and I hit all the places that I've already painted with their original base colour. So here I'm using skinny, uh, sunny skin tone, apologies, just to do the face and the hands again. And then I will move on to the uniform. Uh, for this I'm using the US dark, uh, dark green not dark earth, dark green, and this again is just hitting the tops of the uniform where pockets are or where you can see creases and things. So what you're doing here is really you're just creating a three-tone effect. So you've got your base coat, the Agrax then provides shadow and darkening of that base coat, and then this stage is just highlighting it with that original base coat, bringing it back to life and to colour again. Then I'll go back in with that green ochre that I used on the canvas equipment and his, his backpack etc. Uh, and again just hitting and touching some of the very tiny highlights that you can see just to breathe a tiny little bit of life into the figure and uh, just again just to give you that shadow and that sense of 3D uh, sculpts to just bring out those details as much as anything else. And with his helmet painted in the original brown violet, I will then go with a slightly lighter green. This is probably Russian green, that's quite nice, for the scrimmage net and the little bits of camouflage that he's got hanging off. Just again, just to bring, make those, give them a slightly different colour to the helmet itself. And then you are done. And once the full platoon is ready, get them ready for varnishing by putting them on something like this, a little upside down Tupperware. And I use Windsor & Newton's Professional Artist Matte Spray. Make sure your room is ventilated or you're wearing a mask or more likely do it outside uh, just to be safe and to stop any of that spray getting into you. The final thing to do then is the bases, and for this I use PVA glue, uh, which is white glue. Uh, just use this straight out of the bottle and just spread it all over the base of the figure. Just being careful not to get it on his on his boots or on his legs or anything like that as much as possible. And then we're going to sprinkle some static grass over this. This is Javis static grass. You can buy this anywhere. You can get it on eBay or whatever. This is uh, summer colours, but you can get it in very different uh, shades. And I just sprinkle this over the top. You can use an applicator if you like. I don't bother. Once you've got it on there, if you give it a little blow, it makes some of it stand up and it uh, looks quite effective. And there we have the full paratrooper platoon. So this is made up of two sections, each of about 12 men with a sergeant and a lieutenant, uh, a bazooka team and also a 60mm mortar. These will be used for chain of command and as I say this is why they are all individually based. If you wanted to put them on multiple bases you could quite easily do that as well just following these instructions. These have been speed painted. I did these over maybe two or three sessions in an evening uh, so they were done within a week. Uh, very easy, very quick and you can get these quickly onto the tabletop.
Well, if you've enjoyed this video, please do check out my other painting videos and the rest of the channel. Please do subscribe if you haven't done. Also, please do check out my Patreon. It does help me keep the lights on here at Steel Towers. Uh, give me a like, give me a comment. Tell me if you've liked this video. Tell me if you haven't liked it. I really don't mind. And thank you very much for watching.